نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرخ لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we start with verse 43 of Surah An-Nisa and we have talked about the first part of the verse 43 where we talked about the orders and the commandments regarding alcoholic drinks and intoxicants. So from starting from the next part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارًا حَتَّى تَعْلَمُوا مَا تَقُولُونَ وَلَا جُنُبٌ إِلَّا آبِرِي إِلَّا آبِرِي سَبِيلٍ حَتَّى تَغْتَسِلُوا O you who have believed, do not approach your prayers. When do not approach your prayers, number one, while you are intoxicated until you know what you are saying. And secondly, do not approach your prayers when? When you are in a state of janaba. Except those passing through a place of prayer until you have washed your whole body. That is, you have performed or you've taken a bath. And if you are ill or on a journey or one of you comes from the place of relieving himself or you have contacted women and you find no water, then seek clean earth and wipe over your faces and your hands with it. Indeed, Allah is ever pardoning and forgiving. So in this verse number 43, the pardoning and the forgiving Allah is now elaborating on a few uh, different concepts of purification and this needs to be understood in depth as purification is something very important for a believer. Hazrat Abu Malik Ashri رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ narrates in Muslim that the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said At-tahur shathr al-iman Purification is half of iman of belief of faith and Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah says Inna Allah yuhib al-tawwabina wa yuhib al-mutatakhirin There is absolutely no doubt that Allah loves those There are certain people people with two traits people with two deeds will be amongst the beloved people of Allah The ones are who keep themselves pure and the second who repent who seek forgiveness Allahumma ja'alna minhum Allah make us one of those So in this verse, Allah is talking about the two steps which are mentioned here are ghusl, that is bath and tayammum. But uh, now I will be talking about the three steps to purification. The first and the primary step of purification is wuzu. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Ibn Majah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Miftahu salati at-tahur that purity to key is purity is the key to salah and they are the words of a hadith that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that salah is the key to paradise and wudu is the key to salah Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah does not accept salah without purity and does not accept charity from the wealth which was from uh, from the stolen wealth any wealth which was stolen from booty and Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah does not accept 
prayer of a person who is without wuzu until wuzu is performed. So this makes us very clear that praying or offering salah without wuzu, it will not be accepted. Wuzu is the basic and the primary prerequisite which is needed before offering salah. Now I would before talking about the method of the wudu and different things about wudu, I would first want to talk about a few ahadiths regarding the virtue of wudu so that we get very, we are clarified and we realize the importance of performing wudu in a very proper way and according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Usman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever, whoever performed the wudu and performed it well, performed it well means that according to the rules and regulations of Quran and Hadith, who performed it well, all his sins will go out even from under his nails. So this is the virtue of wudu. Then in detail, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said that when a Muslim bondsman performs wudu, during it he washes his face and pours water over it, all the sins he had committed with his eyes are removed from his face. That is, they will be washed over, they will be taken away with the water of the wuzu. And similarly, in another hadith, Prophet said that when he puts water in his mouth, he washes his mouth, the sins committed by the mouth, that is what? That is of the tongue, they will be washed away. And after it, when he washes his hands, all the sins he has committed with the hands are washed away from him. And after that, when he washes his feet, all the sins he has committed with the feet, like by using the feet to go to a place for committing a sin, they will go out of them till by the time he's finished with the wuzu, he becomes completely purified from sins. So you realize that this wuzu is not only going to wash off the dirt or the dust or the grime from the body and clean the body from the normal filthiness, but it also gives us an inner cleanliness and cleans the soul and also cleans the person from his sins. The sins are also removed. And I think till here we can relate that the wudu is going to wash off all forms of dust from the exposed body parts because the parts of the body which it is obligatory to be washed on during the wuzu are the exposed body parts. And these are the body parts which tend to get filthy or dusty or dirty during our day-to-day -day life and activities. So the wuzu would clean them up. But it is not only that. You know, in fact, these exposed body parts, that is our eyes, our tongue, our hands, our feet, these are the body parts or these are the organs of our body by which a person commits sin. For example, sins will be obviously committed by the tongue, by the eyes, by the hands or by the feet. Nobody, nobody would ever commit sins by his liver or by his kidney or by the internal organs or by the stomach or by his pancreas or by the spleen. So all the body parts which are the organs of committing sin are also washed off during the wuzu and hence the all the sins will also be, which have been committed by those body parts, will also be purified. Like Allah says in Surah Hud, verse number 114, Inna al yus There is absolutely no doubt that good deeds, there are certain hasanat, there are certain good deeds, who do what? They annul the sins, they take away the sins. So, wuzu is one of them. 
And as we went through the verse number 31 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In tajtanibu kabai ramatun hawna anhu nukafir ankum sayyiatikum. That if you avoid the major sins for about which you are forbidden, we will remit from you your minor evil deeds. So this is wuzu, which leads to the remittance and to the forgiveness of the major sins. And then there is a hadith reported by Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever performs wuzu, whoever performs wuzu and complete wuzu and after it he says, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. That is, he recites these words and then Prophet ﷺ promised that all the eight gates of heaven will open for him and he will be able to enter by whatever gate he likes to. So this is such a big reward and this is such a huge promise by the Prophet ﷺ. You know, when person is performing wuzu, all her sins are forgiven by Allah. And that is why he becomes entitled to be entered, to enter from any gate of the paradise he wants to. And he is desirous of. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when my followers will be summoned on the day of resurrection, their faces, their hands and their feet will be radiant with the effects of wuzu. Thus, whoever of you can increase his radiance, make in perfect, must he do so. So this is the merit of a person doing a complete and perfect, perfect wuzu that that the parts of the body which are washed with wuzu, they will start shining. And there is another incidence of the Prophet ﷺ when Prophet ﷺ was talking about his intercession on the day of resurrection and he was mentioning that he will be giving people the water from the river of Garthar. The companions asked him that there are going to be so many people on, on the day of judgment. How will you recognize us? How will you find out that who is deserving your intercession and how will you Fix out the people who are your followers. The Prophet ﷺ again said, Muhajjalina min atharil wudu. I will recognize the people of my ummah. I will recognize my followers by the radiance of their face and their hands and their feet because of the effects of wudu. And any one of you who wants to increase his radiance may do so. So we can increase the radiance of the parts of our wuzu on the day of resurrection, inshallah, by, by perfecting our wuzu, by performing our wuzu more frequently and my, and also by staying in a state of purity after performing wuzu more frequently and to perform wuzu more clearer and closer to the sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, and to wash the parts of the body with a greater hardship and a greater perfection and a greater sincerity. So this will increase the radiance of all the exposed body parts. And then Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that Prophet wasalam, said, may I tell you three things? May I tell you three things owing to which Allah removes the sins and causes the elevation in ranks? The first out of this, when the companions said, do, do so, please. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, the first on the list, the first on the list of the deeds which are going to remove our sins and which is going to lead the elevation of the ranks. The first, the Prophet ﷺ said, is to perform wuzu. To perform wudu despite inconvenience. That a person is sick, the person is tired, the water is cold. Despite inconvenience, when a person performs wudu, this will lead to forgiveness of the sins and of 
to of raising the ranks of the believer. The second thing is to step more frequently towards the mosque. And the third is to wait for the next prayer after offering the first. So these are the three deeds which are going to lead to the forgiveness of the sins and to raising the ranks of a person also. Hazrat Soban Raziallahu Ta'ala and who reports in Musnad Ahmad and Ibn Majah that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, walk upright, remain steadfast on the straight path, but you will never be able to have full command over it. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, know well that the best deed among your deeds is prayer and only a truthful believer can take full care of his fuzu. Allahumma ja'allam minhum. Allah make us one of those. And what is the reward of doing wudu upon wudu? That a person was in a state of wudu and there was, he could have very much offered his prayer and his wudu was complete. But he did fresh wudu. He performed wudu upon wudu. Then what would be the reward? Hazrat ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmzi that the Prophet sallallahu said, whoever performed wudu, not withstanding purity, that is, he was with wudu and he did not actually need to do wudu to offer his salah. Whoever performed wudu without, not, not withstanding purity, 10 good deeds will be written down for him. And Allah says in Quran, "You halawna athabira min al-dhahabi wal fizza." The people of the paradise, the people of the paradise, those who used to perform wudu, they will be asked to, and they will be requested to, and they will be provided with bangles and with bracelets of gold and silver, and they will wear these bangles and their bracelets of gold and silver till where? Till the point the water of their wuzu used to reach. And reading all this and comprehending and remembering all this made performing wuzu so very easy and so very light for the companions. And we, we learned that the companions used to wash the parts of the body beyond the parts that were obligatory, that they used to wash their arms above their elbows and half of the upper arm they used to wash and they used to wash like half of the legs, half of the lower legs, their shins, up, half up to the shins, much beyond their ankles. So this was just because they were, they were desirous of all these gold and silver bangles and bracelets on their body in Jannah. And then... We realize that after wuzu, there is another act which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is really approved of and he actually adopted himself was doing mithwaq. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in Nasai that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, mithwaq cleans the mouth thoroughly. It cleans the mouth and it also pleases Allah. It is a source of pleasure of Allah and it is a method of cleaning the mouth. As Abu Huraira ta'ala who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if I had not feared or if I did not fear that my followers would be put into hardship, I would have asked or I would have made it compulsory for them to use miswaq at every wuzu or with every time of salah. So just out of ease and making things comfortable for his followers, he did not order or he did not make it compulsory or obligatory. But this shows how 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 important it is and how how Prophet ﷺ liked it. Hazrat Abu Mama radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet ﷺ said, when a Jib whenever Jibrail, the angel of Allah, came to me, he asked me about Miswaq. And I feared that I might abrade the front part of my mouth by using miswak all the time. And Prophet Sallallahu used to use miswak so very frequently before sleeping, immediately after when he woke up in the morning for his Salatul Tahajjud and with 
every uh, wuzu when he performed and whenever he came back home and even during fast he used to he used to do miswak so frequently that the companions said that we could not count how frequently he used to do his miswak and a companion reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was using miswak to clean his teeth and his mouth he used to say ah ah that he was he used to scrub his teeth he used to clean his palate he used to scrub his tongue deep till his throat to make it make it all clean and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, used to uh, do it whenever he used to come back home and it is also reported by a sahih hadith that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised that if a person performs or he uses miswak in his wudu before the salah then the then the ranks of the salah will be raised by 70 times so this is all the merit or the virtues of wudu which prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has narrated and has uh, told us so that we realize how very important it is to be very perfect and very sensitive about our wudu so now coming to the point then uh, to understand is that when does it become obligatory to do wudu that is when the wudu doesn't stay complete a uh, main summary if i explain that when something enters or when something leaves something entering or something leaving the orifices of the body the wuzu does not stay complete <coughs> like voiding voiding are the passing of flatus from the part of the body and uh, mind you it's not all conditions of flatus being passed out by uh, hadith in bukhari we learn that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that it is not all forms of flatus which leads to incompletion of the wuzu it is the flatus which is heard or which has a smell and then uh, from uh, after voiding or passing out of flatus passing out of some stones or insects or pus or blood coming out from this part of the body or some instruments or tubes or catheters being passed in the body or examination per rectal examination etc if done then this also would lead to incomplete wudu similarly vaginal or gynecological examination or passing certain instruments or speculums or spotting or bleeding vaginal spotting or bleeding will also be need uh, will lead to imperfection of the wudu and then when somebody has a full mouth full of vomit and uh, then if a person goes up to sleep or just dozes off then the wuzu is also not complete and if somebody touches the private parts directly without any cloth or any cloth or any piece or part of their clothes intervening so directly touching the private parts would also lead to the incompletion of the wuzu and uh, then any form of sexual excitement between the husband or the wife any form of relationship which is uh, which is triggering off or which is uh, leading to any form of sexual excitement and uh, then giving birth to a dead person or the deceased it is it is advisable that after giving bath to a deceased it is uh, better to take a bath but if there are conditions if there is no time and if there are no conditions available for taking bath under at the, that time it is mandatory and it is obligatory to perform wudu minimum of wudu would be needed so these are in short a few conditions in which a person is needed to perform wudu and then i would be talking about and repeat thing because these things are very very important and we need to talk about them with each other because if there is some error it needs to be highlighted and it needs to be corrected so the simple method of wuzu has been allah has mentioned it in surah maida verse number 6 where allah says ya ayyuhal ya ayyuhal ladina amanu wa idha qumtum ila salati that o oh, believers when you proceed towards salat what do you do faqsilu wujuhakum wa aydiyakum ila almarafiq wamsahu bi ra'usikum wa arjulukum ila alqabain 
that O oh believers, when you proceed towards Salah, then wash your face, wash your hands up to your elbows and wipe your hands over your heads and wash your feet up to your ankles. Wash your arjulukum ilal qabain. Wash your feet up to your ankles. So from this verse of Surah Maida, verse number six of Surah Maida, we can relate the four parts of the body regarding which it is obligatory to wash those four parts of the body. Other than then the wuzu which we normally perform in our routine, it also has addition of certain sunnas. So now I'll, I will be just like quickly going through all the steps of wuzu and I will be highlighting that which step is a sunnah and which step is a farad or it is an application. So the first step is before we start doing wudu, the first step is to say Bismillah. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tirmizi that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that whoever does not say Bismillah before his wudu, his wudu is incomplete. So saying Bismillah before the wudu is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then washing both the hands Till the wrists, this again is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And then washing the mouth by putting a handful of water in the mouth. It can be just swishing, it can be just gargling, or it can be uh, cleaning or rubbing or wiping with the finger, the teeth and the gums, etc. So the more you do, the more you do, the greater will be the reward and the greater will be the ranks of the wudu and the greater will hence be the ranks of the salah offered with this wudu. The next comes uh, raising or uh, inhaling water in the nostrils. This can be also in different forms and uh, washing the mouth and washing or rinsing the mouth and cleaning the nose. These both are sunnah according to most of the scholars. But certain scholars consider that nose and mouth, since it happens to be a part of the face, then they consider this part also as an obligation and farad. But there are scholars, I repeat, who consider that the mouth and the nose is just a sunnah and it is not a farad and not an obligation. So taking in water in the nostrils, inhaling it uh, just till the tip of the nose or inhaling it uh, till the root of the nose and then maybe even cleaning both the nostrils with the little finger of the left hand and blowing out. So this is, I will again repeat, the more we do, the more we try to perfect, the greater will be the reward and raised will be the ranks. And then after this is washing the face. The washing the face is uh, from above. It is uh, It starts from the root of the hair uh, on the forehead and below it is where the chin joins our neck. And it is not till the tip of the chin, but it is the place where the chin joins our neck. And from left to right, it is from the left lobule of the air to the right lobule of the air. So this is the whole part of the face which has to be washed and not a single part equal to the follicle of a hair should be left dry. Like if anybody is wearing a nose pin, then it should be, we should move it slightly so that no part of the skin on the face stays dry. And then washing off the head, of the hands till the elbows and the elbows will be included in, in the washable parts. And then wiping a wet or a moist hand over the head, starting from the root of the hair on the forehead till the nape of the neck. And then wiping or uh, passing the fingers in the ears. So uh, washing the face and uh, rubbing your hand over the head and washing the hands till the uh, till the elbow. This is all obligatory and faras. And without this, the wuzu will not be complete. But cleaning the ears and doing masa of the ears is a sunnah by most of the scholars. And then washing the feet till the ankles and ankles will also be included. We need to see and we need to be careful and sensitive about the fact that any part of the ankles or any part of the feet will not be dry. 
and the whole process has to be very very carefully and perfectly done i am repeating again and again that not a part equal to a hair will be left dry because there is a hadith reported by hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in abu daud and nisai the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw a person who was performing wudu and a part of the skin to the extent of the size of a nail was dry and he asked him to go again and perform the wudu again similarly hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw a person who was in hurry and because of hurry he left his heels dry or a part of the heels dry and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam called upon him wailul aqabi min an-nar wailul lil aqabi min an-nar wo be upon to he who leaves his ankles dry so the hadith tells us the punishment of the person for who leaves his heels dry and does not wipe them and does not wash them when he is doing wuzu so after the whole steps of wuzu is then a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to recite ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu and the supplication allahumma ja'alni min at-tawwabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatawhirin and i repeat that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, he says and he promised that any person who perfected his wudu and then he recited these two for him any he will be asked and he will be allowed to enter from any of the eight gates of paradise he would desire to and then after wudu is the uh, offering of a salah tahayyatul wudu tahayyatul wudu are the supererogatory uh, salah which is offered after uh, performing the wudu and there is a, uh, there is an incident of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in uh, bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, related to hazrat bilal in fact you know it was the routine of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that after he led the fajr salah he would turn his side and he was turn his face towards his companions and he would sit there and then if he had a dream uh in the in the night before he would narrate his dream and then he would tell him the the uh, the people the companions who were there he would tell them the interpretation of the dream of his own dream and uh, then he used to ask the companions and if any companion had a dream he would uh, he would narrate the dream and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would tell the interpretation of his dream as well so it is reported in bukhari that uh, one day prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after leading the fajr salah he put his hand on hazrat bilal's shoulder and he stopped him and he asked him that bilal bilal which of your deeds regarding which of your deed amongst all your deeds do you expect that you will be rewarded the most you will be rewarded the greatest reward you expect from allah subhanahu wa taala because today you know what because today i heard your footsteps ahead of me in jannah in his dream the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so so hazrat hazrat bilal radhiyallahu ta'ala and who said that o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is one deed which i do regularly and i perform with commitment and i do perseverantly and persistently you know what the deeds of the bondsman which allah likes the most are those which the person keeps on doing persistently with perseverance adwa mahu with persistence with dawam may they be small even so a deed which is which may be a very small deed but when it is performed with profound uh, it is performed with perseverance and persistence and with steadfastness then this deed is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes and loves from the bondsman so hazrat bilal radhiyallahu ta'ala and who said that there's one deed which i am very steadfast in and i do very regularly that whenever i perform wuzu then i always offer some supererogatory salah 
as far as i can so this was the this was the tahayyatul wuzu which hazrat bilal radiyallahu ta'ala and who used to offer which raised his ranks to this level in jannah so this is all about wudu and the merits it raises of the believer who performs wuzu in perfection and performs wuzu in completion the next step of purification which i would be talking briefly about is the bath the bath of purification the bath of the purification becomes obligatory when number 1 when there is a physical relationship or a sexual relationship between the husband and the wife or in case of emission or when the woman is over with her menstrual cycle that is the vaginal bleeding of her monthly cycle or when she is over with her postpartum bleeding then in these two conditions also to acquire purification she needs a bath of purification and also when a person gives bath to a dead person it is preferable and it is advisable and it is better if the person if available situations in time before the salah he or she should take a bath preferably but a minimum of performing wuzu is needed in this condition now in brief summing up from more a lot of hadith from bukhari and muslim i would the bath of the purification as proven by the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as reported by hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and hay many of the hadith i would mention step wise is first of all voiding after voiding washing the private parts and then to wash the hands after washing the hands the wudu will be performed like a normal manner normal routine the steps of wudu they will be performed up in the normal manner and after the completion of the wudu the person is supposed to wash the hair and the hair as proven by sunna can be washed in various methods like either the whole of the head can be washed three times making sure pouring water and rubbing with the hands ensuring that even the root of a single hair doesn't stay dry the whole of the head can be washed thrice or the hair can be divided in two two parts the left and the right and we can wash the right part first thrice and then we can wash the left part thrice or the whole head can be the whole hair can be divided into three parts the central part the left and the right part and the three parts the first the central part is washed thrice and then the right part is washed thrice and then the left part is washed thrice this is these are the different methods the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he adopted and can be any one of all of these and dividing different parts is to ensure perfection and to ensure that we are so careful in dividing parts that none of the hair will be left dry and after washing the hair then uh, water is poured over the body and continuously the person is rubbing and scrubbing to ensure that all the folds of the body and all the hidden parts of the body and all the hair of the body are completely wet and not a single hair of the body or a root of the single hair of the body stays dry and moving our nose pins and moving our rings and moving our uh, ear rings or our tops to ensure that the whole of the skin gets moist and this can also be like first we can wash the left half of the body the front of the left half then we can attend and concentrate and focus towards the back of the left half uh, of the right first the front of the right half and then the back of the right half and then the front uh, left half front and the back of the left half and dividing the body into different parts again is to ensure that we are very careful and we are very sensitive just attending to one part at a time so that neglect is just ruled out 
And then after washing the whole body, the person, according to Sunnah, will get aside, will step aside and then wash the feet. The feet could have also been washed uh, as when we were performing the wudu or they could be just postponed and they were not washed with the wudu. Then after complete, completion of the wudu and completion of the bath, the person steps aside that is where the person was sitting or standing the person gets to one side and there the feet are washed last of all so these are the different steps which are in detail stepwise according to sunnah now in this verse also and in verse number six of surah tulmaida uh, and the third method of purification which is uh, which has been taught is uh, the third method is tayammum and here also allah is saying fatayammamu su'idan tayyiban now when were the orders of tayammum revealed hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in a very lengthy hadith narrated in Bukhari that uh, she was accompanying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, it was on her way back that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the whole of um, the army which was accompanying they stopped and at the stopover Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and who went for uh, to attend to the call of the nature and she says then when I was coming back I lost my necklace and she came and she told, told it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and um, everyone was then asked to look for the necklace because it was the necklace which was a trust and it was a necklace of Hazrat Isma radiallahu ta'ala anha so it was a matter of trust and it it was not right to lose it and not to be able to repay it when she gets back so everybody was like uh, looking for the necklace and then there was a time of salah and at the at the point where the whole of the army and the companions of the prophet sallallahu had stopped over they found that there was no water to perform wudu and they were all upset prophet sallallahu was in his camp and uh, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her narrates that his uh, head was in my lap and he was deep asleep. And she also narrates that people went to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who and they complained what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and who had and her had done that they uh, she had lost she had been very careful and she had been very uh, forgetful and she had just uh, lost the necklace and that had put them all into trial that now it was the time of salah and they could not find water and they could not perform wudu and Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who was not happy about the whole situation and Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and who and her says that he came into the camp and then he was like uh, he was pinching me on my flanks and he was he was poking me in my flanks as if he was trying to tell me that what what have you come up to and she said that I would just not move an inch I would not move an inch. I, I was just sitting still, although he was poking in my flanks, but I was sitting still because I was afraid that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would just get up. And then um, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got up, uh, they, the companions came over with the complaint that there was no water. And then um, these these verses of uh, the uh, Surah to Nisa were revealed and they were permitted to do Tayammum. So this was the background in which these uh, verses of Surah An-Nisa were revealed. And then how to do Tayammum is also being with what they were supposed to do Tayammum and how they were supposed to do Tayammum. Allah has mentioned in um, this verse very clearly. And then there is an um, incident uh, narrated by Hazrat Amar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala and who in uh, Bukhari in Muslim he narrates that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, offering his uh, he was leading um, congregational salah and Hazrat Amar radiallahu ta'ala who said that he was sleeping and he had a mission and when he got up he saw that the prayer had or the salah had been started 
And what he did was that he said that I started rolling in the soil. I started rolling on the earth to uh, make sure that I get clean. And when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi completed his Salah and after saying Salam, he addressed to Hazrat Amar bin Yasir Razilahu Ta'ala Anhu and inquired what was the reason? Why was he doing all that? He was rolling about himself in the mud. Hazrat Amar said that I told him that I had a mission and I was trying to purify myself with this mud. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, this was not needed, that you did not need to do all this. And instead, the Prophet Sallallahu rather than just saying and negating that what he did was not right and all what he needed to do, what? Prophet Sallallahu actually, rather than verbally speaking and trying to tell what he needed to do, he actually physically demonstrated. And as Atamar ta'ala who said that, how did he demonstrate? He patted his head on the earth, on the floor. He patted his health on the, uh, his, his hands on the soil. And by certain narrations, it is narrated that he blew his uh, uh, hands. And in certain, it is not reported. So just after patting his hands on the soil, he rubbed the left hand with his, uh, he uh, rubbed the right hand with his left hand and then his left hand with his right hand first. And then he wiped his hands over his face, uh, over his face, uh, over his face. And this was it. Nothing more than this and nothing less than this. So in certain narrations, uh, it is mentioned that first he wiped his face and then his hands. And in other narrations, it is mentioned that he first wiped his hands and then his face. And in this verse, it is uh, mentioned, Fam sahubi wa aidikum. So first the face and then the hands in this uh, verse 43 of Surah An-Nisa. But here I would want to stress that it is just rubbing the hands and the face. Nothing more than that. There is no uh, rubbing the hair or passing the hands over one's hair or uh, massaging the back of the neck or rubbing your hands or uh, moving your hands over the arm or rubbing your feet till your ankles. No, they were the parts of the body as explained for wudu to be obligatory, but they are not obligatory for time. For tayammum, all what the person needs to do is to rub the face and rub the hands. It, in fact, you know, this tayammum is just to maintain the sensitivity. This is just an action. It is actually not going to clean any part. It is actually not going to purify physically any part of the body may be the hands or the face but this is an action which has been suggested to the bondsman because it just keeps the person aware the person keen the person sensitive about the mere fact that if the person is not in a state of purity he just not he just cannot stand just impure or not clean enough in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to offer his salah. Salah is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salah is conversing with your sustainer, with the sustainer of the worlds. So you need to do some form of another in any form of action to purify yourself rather than just standing the way you are. So it is just to maintain the sensitivity of acquiring the condition of purity before, before performing Salah and nothing more than that. So the next thing we need to know about Tayammum is that for that when can a person do Tayammum? And as we learn according to the verse, wa in kuntum marza aw ala safarin. So when can we do Tayammum? That is which is the options conditions which have been given as an option is number one then when the person who needs to do wudu or who needs to perform or take a ghusl here i would make want to make it clear that tayammum is sufficient tayammum will be sufficient for wudu and for the bath of purification that is if a person is needing to perform wudu Tayammum will be sufficient. And if a person is needing to perform the 
bath of purification for him also or for her also doing tayammum will be sufficient so if a person needs to do wudu or if a person needs to do take a bath of purification but the person cannot find water number 1 second the water is available but the available water is not pure and it is not clean it has certain impurity which doesn't make it permissible to do wudu or bath with that the third is that pure water although is available but using the water is detrimental for the health in one manner or the other and it is not advisable for the person for the person's health issues to use water like if a person is old an old sick debilitated person is weak has just recovered from a major illness like chest infection or an pneumonic complication and now the situation is that a person who has just recovered from a very bad chest infection or a pneumonia which was previously caused because of exposure to cold weather or anything now the condition is that the person is need of performing wudu or taking a bath but the water which is available is extremely cold and the weather is extremely cold and under the situation if the person takes bath with this cold water or even performs wudu with this chill cold ice cold water then he may fall sick again so this is an option there you have a leverage then if a person has a skin disease like fungal infections eczemas or there is a person who has burns and then there are certain fractures or with with casts on them or the person has undergone a surgery and the person can't take bath because the because all the stitches and everything they they we we cannot just get them let moist or we cannot let water touch them so under all these situations tayammum is permissible there's an incidence in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat abdullah bin abbas was yallahu ta'ala who reports in abu daud and ibn majah that there was a person he had a wound on his head and he was sleeping and he had a mission and he inquired he asked the people that could he set aside taking a bath but the people advised him and they said that he has to take a bath that that is after a mission despite your wound you it is mandatory for you to take a bath and so he did so he took bath and his wound worsened and he died out of it and when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to know about it he said may allah ruin them they they killed him and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said remedy of ignorance is to inquire about an issue you are not aware of so it is this uh, this incidence of these reports us and tells us that when a tayammum can be performed and then the next question we need to know and the issue we need to know is that with what can we perform tayammum here in the verse allah has said suidan tayyiban that is dry soil or the dry mud but the scholars clearly say that anything anything which when it is burnt does not melt or which when burnt does not turn into ashes can be used for the purpose of tayammum So now making a list of all those things which will melt when they are put in fire like all forms of plastics and nylon and rayons synthetic cloth and all those things which are made out of plastics and then glass because glass although melts it melts at very high temperature but it does melt and all the utensils which are made up of glass and then steel and metals because metal again melts does melt at very high temperature but in any how it does melt so all forms of metals may be steel brass bronze iron they cannot be used because they melt and then the things and wax wax also melts and then things which burn to ashes when they are burnt or they are put in a fire are like paper cardboard wood cloth wool all these things would burn but the things which 
none of the two above happens would be like mud soil stone sand cement gravel all forms of pottery or utensils made up of mud and pottery marble chalk lime so a person who is sick we may just put a small um, small piece of uh, stone close to the bed or we may just put a small pot made out of clay or pottery or we might just put uh, a piece of marble on the bed side for the patient to use while tayammum now how long can tayammum be do and how long will it be permissible for the person to go on and on doing tayammum hazrat abu dhar ghaffari radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad and tirmizi that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said pure soil cleans it is what sa'id and tayyiban pure soil cleans and pure uh, purifies when water is not available even for 10 years even for 10 years if water is not available the person can go on doing tayammum and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says but when water is available then the body should be washed use of water is in any case better so that is these are the words of the hadith so now we clearly understand how tayammum can be done when tayammum can be done with what tayammum can be done and for how long tayammum can be done and when the permission conditions of permission they finish then instead of tayammum if a person was needing wudu then he'll be performing wudu and if a person was in need of taking a purification bath then he will be taking a purification bath اللهم اجعلني من التوابين واجعلني من المتطهرين verse number 44 <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alam tara ila alladhina utu nasiban min alkitabi yashtaruna adhalana wa yuriduna an tuzillu sabil have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture purchasing error in exchange of it and wishing you would lose the way allahumma ihdina siratal al mustaqim verse number 45 wallahu a'lamu bi a'daikum wa qafa billahi waliyan wa qafa billahi nasira and allah is most knowing of your enemies and sufficient is allah as an ally and sufficient is allah as a helper verse number 46 And among Jews are those who distort words from their proper usage and they say we hear what do they say sami'na wa aswaina we hear and we disobey so this is these are the distorted words of the Jews of the people of Bani Israel who have been called as the maghdub and who Allah has cursed and who have been called as the dhalin that is who went astray the Jews and the Christians so Allah says that it is the people who were cursed by Allah who will be worthy of the wrath of Allah on the day of resurrection they say what they say sami'na wa aswaina that we hear we hear what we hear to the commandments of allah to the orders of islam to the rulings of the prophet of the prophets we hear them and then what do we do aswaina we disobey and then they say hear but be not heard and raina twisting their tongues and defaming the religion but instead if they had said instead of this that is instead of sami'na wa aswaina they had said what sami'na wa atwana this is what a believer needs to say that a believer whenever he or she listens to hears to reads understands or is or is told about the commandments of Quran and hadith he needs to say what sami'na wa atwana we hear and we obey 
If they had said instead of this, we hear and obey and wait for us to sta- understand it, wait for us to understand it, they would have said, it would have been better for them and more suitable for them. But Allah has cursed them for their disbelief. So they believe not except for a few. Verse number 47. O you who were given the scripture, believe in what we have sent down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, confirming that which is with you before we obliterate the faces and turn them toward their backs or curse them as we cursed the Sabbath breakers and ever is the decree of Allah accomplished. Rabbana. لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ خديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين سمامين